Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 78th episode of Best Tech in Phone Rumors. To start off in this episode, I just wanted to say I have a lot of different things to cover and I'll mainly be focusing on the iOS 5.1 tethered and untethered jailbreak, explaining some things about that and also talking about the new iPad that was announced on Wednesday at Apple's media event. So first up, let's talk about the iOS 5.1 jailbreak. So iOS 5.1 was actually released after Apple's media event on Wednesday and just hours after 5.1 was released, the jailbreak for it was pushed out in the form of red snow. Now there are a couple of catches to this jailbreak. First of all, it's tethered. For those of you that don't know what tethered means, I'll explain it really quick. So basically if you have to turn your device off and then turn it back on, whether it's because it reboots or because you just have to turn it off, then you will have to plug it back into your computer and rerun red snow in the just boot mode. You don't have to complete completely re jailbreak it over again. You just have to run it in the just boot mode, which requires you to plug it in, put it into DFU mode, hit extras, go to just boot, and then basically you're good to go and it will boot up properly. And then you will be able to use all the functions on your device. So that's basically what tethered means. Next, it only works for the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation, as well as the first iPad. So this does not work on either of the A5 based devices. And again, it is tethered for the other devices, unless you're on an old boot ROM iPhone 3GS. And I'm going to talk about the iOS 5.1 untethered jailbreak, which is obviously yet to be released and no details for it have been released either. But I'm just going to talk about it based on what's happened in the past and what is likely to happen this time around. So the iPhone 4S and the iPad 2 actually have an A5 processor, which is different from all of the other devices that the iOS 5.1 jailbreak currently works on. So obviously the exploit needed to jailbreak the iPad 2 and the iPhone 4S is different. And the reason why the iOS 5.1 Tether jailbreak was released for those older devices is because they have a boot ROM exploit that they can use. And the only way a boot ROM exploit can be patched is to release an upgraded version of hardware. All they have to do to make it compatible with new firmwares is to just slightly tweak it. And they haven't discovered that for the iPhone 4S or the iPad 2 yet. So they don't have a boot ROM exploit for it. They only have a boot ROM exploit for the older devices, which is why the jailbreak was pushed out so quickly. An untethered jailbreak is slightly different. Most of them rely on a user land based exploit, which can can be easily patched by Apple simply by upgrading the firmware and closing the hole that they use to exploit. So with that said, they probably will wait to release an untethered jailbreak until they can do it on all devices. And that does include the new iPad. However, they might wait to release a jailbreak for the new iPad until later on. We'll just have to see what kind of problems the A5X chip poses in regards to jailbreaking the actual iPad itself. And the A5X chip is what the new iPad is powered with. So it's a slightly different A5 chip because it's redesigned, it's optimized, and it has quad core graphics. So the chances of the same exploit being able to be used on the A5 chip as well as the A5X chip are slim to none. So we'll just have to see how things play out. But again, for now, there's only a tethered jailbreak. However, I will keep you guys updated when an untethered jailbreak is released, especially for the newer devices. So just make sure you guys watch out for that. I'll be updating you guys on Twitter and Facebook and obviously I'll make a video on it as soon as it's released. Now let's talk about the new iPad. I did a lot of coverage on this on my website and I'm just going to kind of break it down for you guys if you want some more in-depth information on it. You can check out my full expose for the new iPad and you can also check out the live coverage I did on Apple's media event on Wednesday. So everything was detailed in that as well. But like I said, I'm just going to give you guys a brief overview. So five key features were announced and the first thing is a retina display. So this thing is extremely extremely high quality. It runs at a resolution of 2048 by 1536. And it has four times the pixel density of that of its predecessor. So the iPad 2's display, which is what I've been talking about for a while. And Apple announced that it even has a million more pixels than your 1080p HD TV. So the amount of pixels that are compressed into this 9.7 inch display are more than pixels that you see in those higher end TVs, even TVs up to like 60 inches. So the graphics on this thing are extremely amazing. Next up, they announced that it's powered by a new A5X chip, which is what I just talked about a second ago when going over the iOS 5.1 untethered jailbreak situation. Basically, it's just an upgraded, revamped, 
A5 processor with quad-core graphics. So it is still a dual-core processor. It's not a quad-core processor, but you'll find that it does have improved graphics, and that's primarily to push more pixels to the retina display. However, it's also to improve graphics when gaming or when running visually intensive applications. It also has a new five megapixel eyesight camera with the same optics as the iPhone 4S. So you'll get things like face detection and auto exposure on the new iPad. It also has extremely fast 4G LTE support and they claim that its download speeds can reach up to 73 megabits per second. However, that's extremely unlikely, especially since they claim the iPhone 4S would get about 21.1 megabits per second over HSPA+. That definitely isn't the case for me. So in real world applications, I highly doubt the new iPad will receive download speeds of up to 73 megabits per second, but we'll just have to put it to the test once we get it. Also, the other new feature that was announced was dictation. So it's similar to what's on the iPhone 4S, where you just press that microphone key on the keyboard, and it basically transcribes what you say into text, so speech to text. However, it does not have Siri, which is definitely unfortunate, but you've got to take into account that Apple did say that Siri was still in beta stages. So hopefully once it's out of the beta stages, they'll be able to put it into the iPad. And if it's not this iPad, then hopefully it will be the next generation after this new iPad. Now they didn't announce this, but it's been confirmed by a couple of different sources that it will have one gigabyte of RAM as opposed to half a gigabyte of RAM, which is what its predecessor ran on. And that's what the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S run on. So with one gigabyte of RAM, it will kind of have the illusion of being able to run faster than its predecessor because it will be able to handle more applications at once. So it's not directly related to speed, but it's indirectly related to the speed because again, you can handle more applications at once and applications can run better with more applications open and with more processes running. So again, it will seem faster and it will also be able to handle more intense applications and be able to make them run more smoothly than if it just had half a gigabyte of RAM. So that's basically the new iPad. A lot of people have been having mixed reactions to this. Some people think it's great. Other people hate it and think it's just a minor upgrade. And I would be one of the people to say that this new upgrade is actually great. I mean, obviously I'm somewhat biased because I'm an Apple fanboy through and through, but this new iPad does bring a lot to the table. It will be faster, it will have extraordinary graphics, and it will even be able to run over 4G LTE, which is something that I'm super excited about. Moving on, if you were actually wondering why you would even upgrade to 5.1, there's some pretty significant reasons. One of which is the ability to delete photos from photo stream and delete them across all of your devices. So before you weren't actually able to delete photos from PhotoStream on your iDevice itself. It also comes with a couple of other different things such as enhanced audio playback for the iPad, a new 4G indicator for the AT&T iPhone 4S. So because it does run on the HSPA Plus network, they're claiming it's 4G. However, it's really not 4G. Again, you're not getting those 4G speeds, but they have been working with Apple on this for a while. It also includes Japanese support for Siri, a complete completely redesigned camera app for the iPad and even a new way to access the camera on the lock screen before you would actually have to double tap the home button and then hit the camera button once it popped up. However, with the release of iOS 5.1, the camera indicator is always there. All you have to do is touch it and swipe up to access the camera on the lock screen now. And again, it's there by default. And there are a couple of other interesting changes and I covered them on my website. If you want to find out what the changes are, then you can check out the post that's down below in the more info that has them detailed there. Moving on, on March 2nd, Apple's App Store passed 25 billion apps downloaded and that's just under four years of it actually being open. And the 25th billionth app that was downloaded was Where's My Water Free? So the individual who downloaded that application did receive a $10,000 iTunes gift card. Kind of going back to the new iPad and its retina display here, a developer actually took the rumored resolution of the new iPad before it was announced and scaled up his application to match what he thought the resolution would be, which is actually correct. And he compared it against the regular resolution for the iPad 2. And the difference is absolutely shocking. So this is what retina applications will look like on the new iPad. Verizon did announce that they will be offering 4G LTE iPad customers the option to use the mobile hotspot functionality with all of their tethering plans. Whereas AT&T said that their customers will not be able to use the mobile hotspot functionality, but they're actually working with Apple to try and get a plan together where their customers will be able to use the mobile hotspot functionality with the 4G LTE iPad. And I kind of saved this until now because it wasn't really that major. During Apple's event, they also did announce a new Apple TV. It basically just has a streamlined interface. It's slightly different and under the hood, it offers a single core A5 chip and it also supports full 10 
1080p HD video playback. Other than that, it's exactly the same. It comes with the same remote. It looks the same. It has the same dimensions. So everything other than those three changes are the same. Kind of along the same lines, it's been rumored for a while that a full Apple TV set will be released, complete with Siri. And during an interview, Steve Jobs biographer Walter Isaacson actually revealed that he intentionally left out plans for the next Apple TV from his book. So it's definitely interesting and I highly recommend watching that segment of the interview. I'll have a link to it down below in the more info. Also, there's a new giveaway that I'm doing on best tech info and if this image is any indication of what it actually is, hopefully you're as excited about this giveaway as I am and the full details are actually on my website. Finally, I know I didn't talk about this when I was going over the 5.1 jailbreak and that untethered jailbreak situation, but I did do a tutorial on the current 5.1 jailbreak. And if you guys want to see that, then I'll have a link to it down below in the more info as well as everything else I talked about in today's episode. Don't forget to rate this video up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release a new video. And if you guys want to be updated more often, make sure you like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.